lift your hands say father in the name of jesus i yield myself to you i yield my thoughts my desires my cravings my aspirations everything to you guide me teach me instruct me cancel me stop me when it's necessary and take me to where i should be make me the man i should be by your spirit i yield myself completely to you in the name of jesus lift your hands father we thank you we give you glory over to you jesus we return all glory all praise to you every question before your word today receives answer and every problem is solution we give you glory we're not leave here the same way we came your word is touching and impacting our lives thank you father in jesus name we pray give the lord a big hand you may be seated please and may welcome your neighbor to church Third person good morning you're welcome to service welcome the other person ask the person how was your week did you have a wonderful week are you happy to be in god's presence and you are amazing lord you are amazing you are amazing
Esther chapter number four. Esther chapter number four. Esther chapter number four. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry and came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting, weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's mates and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved and she sent remnant to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him. But what happened? Church, what happened? He received it not. Then called Esther for her touch, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her and give him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hattach went forth to Mordecai onto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened unto him and of the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for her people. And her touch come, came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Verse number 10, read together one to go. Again, Esther spake unto her touch and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. Go ahead. All the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called there is one law of his to put him to death except such to whom the king shall what hold out the golden scepter that he may live but i have not been called to come in unto the king how many days so for 30 days she said i've not met with the king go ahead and they told to mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not within thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, what? At what? I can't hear you. At what? This time, what will happen? Then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Verse 15, read together one to go. Then Esther bade them, return Mordecai this answer. Go ahead. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. And fast ye for me, neither eat nor drink. How many days? Three days night or day, I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish, even though it's not the right time to go to the king's house, to go to the king's court, Esther said, I am persuaded to beat the time. Look at Isaiah chapter number 60. Isaiah 60. Verse number 20. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. Say amen. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. Say amen. amen. And the days of thy morning shall be ended. Say amen. amen. Verse 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. Say amen. amen. They shall inherit the land forever. Say amen. amen. 
the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that it may be glorified. Say amen. amen. Verse 22, I want us to read together one to go. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Let's read that verse 22 again, one to go. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Read it with faith in your heart again, one to go. A little one shall become a thousand, a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Tell your neighbor you don't have a clue what I will become very soon. Or oh, say to another person, tell a person you don't have the clue of what I'm about to become. Say to yourself, say eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man what this man is said to become. Say it again with faith in your heart. Say eyes have not seen ears have not heard it has not entered into the heart of men what this man is about to become when you look at that scripture the bible said and i the lord god will hasten it in his time and that's exactly where we got our test for this month a month of divine speed do you still remember a month of speedy accomplishment. Somebody say with speed. Say it again. Say with speed. Say divine speed. You didn't say well. Say divine speed. Say speedy accomplishment. Now, talking about a subject like divine speed to men of vision is actually a very complex task. Trying to balance the demands of vision and then with teaching about when speed is required because when you study through the scripture you discover that vision will have some form of process somebody say process that's why when you look at Habakkuk chapter number two that talked about vision he said, I will stand upon my watch and I will listen to what he will tell me and what I will answer. He said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables so that he may run that readeth it. He said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. He said, finally, what will happen? He shall speak. He said, even though it tarries, wait for it. And so it's, it's such a task trying to teach divine speed to men of vision knowing fully well that some part of vision requires waiting. Are you with me right now? So you must have to do some form of, will I say, Bible surgery to be able to let people understand the waiting period and the time for speed. Are you with me right now? Yeah, because the Bible said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. He said, finally he shall speak. He said, even though it tarries, wait for it. Because there's a part of it that has to do with waiting. And when you study through the scripture, Isaiah 26 verse 16 said, He that believeth should not make haste. And then you still see the same God that said, I will hasten it. And if care is not taken, somebody will think the Bible is controversial. No, it is a two-edged sword and so it should be handled with caution. It is only when it is not properly interpreted that people will misunderstand exactly the, 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 the things in the scripture. Are you with me right now? So when the Bible said, write the vision, make it plain upon table so that he may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. And so how can you balance appointed time? And then how can you balance waiting? And then you're also talking about speed at the same time. 
But when we allow the Bible to interpret itself, it puts us on a better pedestal when you study through the scripture. When you check the life of somebody like Joseph in the Bible, he started having his dreams and his visions when he was around 17. The, uh, Genesis chapter number 37 said that. However, Joseph's dream did not come to pass until he got to the age of 30. And so we saw between 17 to 30 is how many years? How many? 13 years. So what Joseph saw when he was 17, it took him 13 years to fulfill. And so you're now going to ask me what is speed in 13 years. And then you also look at the life of David in the Bible. He was anointed to become king before 17. And he never became a king until he was somewhere around also 30 years. Second Samuel chapter number 5 verse number 4 told us so. Are you with me right now? And so how do you balance talking about speed when you know that the very writing and body language of vision will have something to do with waiting? In fact, if you study the life of Jesus, you notice at birth he was already being celebrated. The Bible said some wise men said we saw his star and we have come to worship because they knew there was something about him. However, the Bible said this guy that they worshipped, they did not hear about his fame until he was 30. So Jesus was born day one a visionary. However, that vision took him another 30 years. And so when you check, you discover it was even longer for Jesus than it was for Joseph and for David. While it took this other one 13 years, it took Jesus 30 years for his name to be heard and then for him to step into fulfilling his vision. But the Bible does not have controversy because there are so many scriptures put together, are you with me right now, that somehow explains this. The problem at times is that in trying to emphasize one truth, if care is not taken, you see some other truth relegated because somebody does not understand the place of balance in understanding the scripture. For instance, there are some persons that when they want to talk about giving, you see them downplay prayers. Have you heard some people say, no matter uh, how much you pray, if you are not a giver, you will die poor. Have you heard things like that? And then, if care is not taken, prayers will be downplayed. Because at times when you are praying to win a contract, you are indirectly praying for prosperity. And if you say that prayers does not bring prosperity, then what is the answer to the prayer for a contract? Are you with me now? So, but the issue at times is trying to, if care is not taken and trying to talk about a particular subject matter, you can downplay the others without understanding the relationship between the two. When you talk about, for instance, the issue of giving and the issue of prayer, you discover that the both of them work together. It was in the place of prayer that Hannah gave Samuel. It was in the place of prayer and worship that Solomon offered to God a thousand bond offering. It was in the place of prayer, the Bible speaking concerning Abraham said that he told his boys that were with him, he said, hang here, I and the Lord will go yonder. It was in the place of worship that that giving happened. Are you with me now? Speaking concerning uh, uh, Cornelius in Acts of the Apostles chapter number 10, the angel said to him, your prayers and what? Your giving has stood before me as a memorial. And so when you study it very well, you discover that these two goes hand in hand. 
And so, as much as you want to talk about giving as one powerful route to prosperity, you also need to talk about prayers because some things are spiritual. Are you with me right now? And then at times, before some people give, they need to overcome themselves, which happens in the place of giving, in the place of prayer. So Paul said, how many times have I asked the Lord concerning this thing? And he said to me, my grace is sufficient unto you. Because at times in the place of prayer, that's where we conquer ourselves and we can take certain steps for God. Are you with me now? And so I'm trying to say that what you see as truth here and you emphasize it, you find out at this other point too, it is still truth. All of them coming together has something that they do. So when you start talking about uh, speed to a man of vision, somebody will say, don't you know that vision takes time? From the scripture, we discover, I've just told you that vision takes time. But there is a time it gets to when speed starts happening. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare over your life, may you function in divine speed. Yeah. Are you with me right now? And so, I mean, when you look through the scripture, you discover that all of them has their time frame. When you study about Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, the Bible said there is time for what? Everything and a, a season for every purpose. Listen, there is time for everything and a season for every purpose. And so you notice that concerning men of vision, there is a time called process and you must go through process. And at times also, when we are speaking in church, we are addressing two different people at the same time. The people that their time has come and their people that their time is yet to come. And now, what the gospel does is that it tells the man that his own time is yet to come, that what you're going through is normal to your vision. Are you with me right now? And then he tells the man that his own time has come, that this is the season. Are you with me right now? He does the two things. And so when you study through the scripture, you discover this, this, whole, this whole thing about time. The Bible said there is a season and there is a time for everything. So there's a time to see a vision. There's a time to fulfill a vision. The problem at times with people is that if care is not taken, when you want to bring about things before their time, you will think God didn't mean what he said. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. So there is a time to tarry. Are you with me right now? There is a time to wait. There is a time, the Bible said, for you have need of patience, so that after you have done the will of God, you will inherit the promise. Jesus was about living in, in Luke chapter number 26. He told his disciples, he said, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. Now, these guys were just getting set to go. Jesus said, listen, the version of it right now is that there is a version to tarry. So if the Bible said there's time for everything, it means there's a time for a slow movement and there is a time for a speedy movement. Are you with me right now? If you're trying to walk on speed in a time of slow movement, you will miss your direction. Because you can actually have speed and you lack direction. Are you with me right now? And then if you come to the time of speedy movement and you are slow, you will miss what is meant for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare that you walk with the required discernment. May you not miss what belongs to you. Come on, say a better amen. Are you with me, church? So the Bible said there is time for everything and there is a season for every purpose under the heavens. 
And so there's a time you shouldn't tell a man of vision about speed because there's no amount of speed that you will teach at that time that will shortchange the time. For instance, when you look at the life of Joseph that was going to be a prime minister in Egypt. You can't be a prime minister in Egypt without 13 years of learning Egypt. And so, the time you call delay was a learning period. And so, if you check it in the real sense, the waiting period of a man of vision is a learning period. And at times, when you learn, you become sharper in your Kairos time. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, you will not miss out on what belongs to you. Yeah. Church, are you with me right now? And so, Joseph needed to learn Egypt for 13 years. If you don't learn Egypt for 13 years, how are you going to be a prime minister in Egypt? And so somebody will say he saw the vision when he was 17. How come it took him time? It took him time because part of your vision has to do with learning. It's talking about Jesus. The Bible said he remained with his parents until the time of his showing forth. And he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will not miss your season. Come on, say I have season. Say I have time. Are you with me right now? And so you see somebody who is supposed to be in politics contesting and failing. Now that doesn't mean he doesn't have a mandate to be in politics. But the failing period is a learning period. Are you with me right now? When you talk about that man, you will not talk about him without talking about that other time too. Are you with me right now? Same thing concerning David. If you saw how David was anointed king over Israel when he was 17, you would think the next morning he would go to stand on the throne. But David was anointed king over Israel and we saw a series of events including an evil spirit from the Lord coming upon Saul and David was brought there to come and play guitar and while he was playing, he was learning about kingship. So you notice that the period of 13 years that it took David was also part of the period in the fulfillment of his vision. Are you with me right now? And so when you are going to talk about divine speed, there is need for us to understand the place of balance so that you don't get it twisted. There is something called appointed time. And the Bible said, when the time comes, I, the Lord, will hasten it. Meaning that everything you are doing and you are doing and you are doing and you are trying and it's not working and you are trying until once you get to Kairos time, you will start doing in one month what you couldn't achieve in three years. That will be somebody's testimony. Come on, say my Kairos time is here. Say it is my season for divine speed. Say it again. Say my Kairos time is here. Say it is my season of divine speed. Church, are you with me right now? And so when you study through the scripture, you notice that there is timing. There is timing. When you saw it is not when it will happen. When it happened was not when you saw it. Are you with me right now? When you check the life of Mordecai in the Bible, you notice that somehow in his DNA was kingship. In his DNA was a savior. And the guy developed noble character even though he was a gate man. Because there is a part of your prophecy that has to do with your character. Are you with me right now? The character that Mordecai had was not the character of an average gate man. His character was the character of a king even though he was at the gate. There are some bosses now who are still servants. 
Are you following what I'm saying now? And so at times it is not just the title, it is about the character and the things you are doing while you are in process. Are you with me right now? And so when you study about Mordecai in the scripture, you will notice something that this guy called Mordecai, even though he was he was supposed to be a king, he was he, he had nobility in him. This Mordecai was still at the gate. And when he saw, when Mordecai saw the the the, the plots to kill the king. The Bible said he was fast to reveal the plot. Even when he revealed the plot, he was still not rewarded. They looked at Mordecai. And then somebody would have thought that immediately after that very revelation, that the next thing you will hear is that the king had promoted Mordecai. But Mordecai was still at the gate. And all of the things that happened, remember it was Mordecai that talked about that brought uh, Esther to the limelight. Yet, Mordecai that brought Esther to the limelight was still at the gate as a gate man. Are you with me right now? Yeah. What was happening? What happened was that Mordecai was in a phase in vision. Speaking concerning Joseph, the Bible said before his word came, the word tried him. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will not miss your season. I declare you will not miss your season. I say it again, you will not miss your season. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare you will not miss your season. And so, if you're talking about divine speed, you must also remember that there is a time where no matter the amount of speed you want to apply, this season requires some form of caution. It's a learning period. No matter how smart a child is, he cannot write Wayek at age two. Am I correct? Now, that doesn't mean that the child is not smart. That doesn't mean that he's not a genius. But however, it will require certain process. Are you with me right now? And so, there are certain processes that you can't miss when you talk about vision. But there is another season in vision where we talk about speed. If you read through the scripture, the Bible said, And I, the Lord, your God, will hasten it in his time. So, until the appointed time comes, you don't talk about divine speed. And once the appointed time comes, you can talk about speed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare a speedy accomplishment. May you experience a speedy accomplishment in the name of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when Mordecai's time came for divine speed, uh, the Bible said Mordecai went to speak to Esther and said to Esther, listen, you have to do something. The Bible said when Esther saw him, saw him, Esther sent some people and said, give him clothes to wear. The guy said, I can't wear any clothes. I can't. I can't. Esther said, listen, uh, I am not supposed to go and meet with the king. There is a procedure. If you must meet with the king, you must be sent a formal invitation. And I have not been invited. In fact, 30 days now, I've been wanting to speak to the king. I have not been able to meet with the king because it was not yet time. When Mordecai heard it, Mordecai told Esther, as far as I am concerned, something should be done urgently. And the Bible said, 
Esther, when she heard it, she said, even though it is not lawful or it is not within the time for me to meet with the king, I will, however, go to meet with the king. If I perish, I perish. And so we saw how that Esther went to meet with the king, even though it was not the Kronos time. At that time, there is something called Kronos time. That is your normal human timing. There is something called Kairos time. And at times, Kairos time supersedes Kronos time. Are you with me right now? By Kronos, Esther was not supposed to see the king. But by Kairos, as a matter of urgency, the king needed to be briefed. And so Esther defied the whole thing and went to see the king because the time for Mordecai's honor has come. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may you enjoy divine speed. I declare, may you enjoy divine speed. He said, and I, the Lord your God, God will hasten it in his time. And so when you study through the scripture, you discover that all of the people that their time came, before it became hasty, there was a time of delay. Are you with me right now? There was a time of delay. But it gets to a time when everything at that point God now puts it in fast forward mood because a people's time has come I prophesy in the name of Jesus may it happen for you faster I declare faster than ever before I declare faster than ever before and so concerning Joseph in the Bible. The Bible said he saw the vision when he was 17. And then he stayed 13 years later. Somebody say 13 years later. Which is the normal process. But listen. When he stayed 13 years, he got to his appointed time. Any further delay then is no longer within God's program. That's why we need discernment to understand waiting time and speed time. Because if you don't understand discernment, you can wait longer than necessary. Are you with me right now? And that's why somehow I feel I'm supposed to, uh, you know, I, 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 I did a Bible study recently and I sent to our diaspora group. I don't know whether uh, that brother is watching from Canada now. And then the brother asked the question. He said, I was trying to explain to them about vision. The one thing about vision is that every vision must be fulfilled. The issue is whether you are the one that will fulfill it. That's why there are some things that God tells you. Even if you don't do it, another person will do it. Are you with me right now? And that's also the reason why every man of vision needs to be worked on so that you will be the one that will fulfill it. Are you with me right now? And so I, I was trying to explain something to him. And so th that brother said, said to me, I, so I, I read that scripture in Habakkuk that said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. He said, finally he shall speak. He said, even though it tarries, wait for he shall speak. And the brother asked a very wonderful question. He said, when, how do I know that the time to fulfill the vision has come? How do I know? Because if the Bible said, for the vision is yet for an appointed, how do I discern the appointed time? And so, as I read through the scripture, even though you may not say it is this year, it is that year, there are certain indicators 
that tells you your time is there. Is somebody following what I'm saying? I mean, if you check, the Bible said Hannah was always going to Shiloh yearly. Every year, and it was the husband's duty, the husband's ritual to give Hannah a portion higher than Penina, even though she didn't have a child. And the portion cushioned Hannah that she didn't feel the pains of not having a child. But there was a particular Shiloh that when Hannah got there, the husband gave her the normal thing the husband used to give her. And the Bible said Hannah refused. And instead of eating in this particular Shiloh, the Bible said Hannah left food and was just at the table praying and muttering words to the point that she left the table. You could tell that her time was closed because I have found out that shame and fame are together. In fact, you get to a point in your life where there is a competition between fame and shame. Let me talk to you a little bit about fame and shame. Did you notice that before Mordecai entered into his fame, he was about experiencing shame? I, I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody here. Because just imagine that everybody was already telling Mordecai, see how you were claiming hard man. Bow down, you will not bow. And you are going to be hanged. And so we saw that there was a race between fame and shame because the guy was getting close to his Kairos time. Is somebody following what I'm saying? And so, when you study through the scripture, you notice Hannah, the same thing. The Bible said, when it got to the time for her to enter into fame, listen, what I'm talking about is not that you will not be put to shame. I know, I said, when it's getting to your Kairos time, one of the things that happens is that what does not used to get you ashamed before? You will start shaming shame. Let me use the word. Is somebody following what I'm saying? The same salary that you were comfortable with irritates you. You know you are getting close. Is somebody following what I'm saying? You know you are getting close. I'm, I'm going to tell you something so profound. Because I found out that most people that committed suicide were close to their breakthrough. Because once it's getting to the time of fame, that's also the time you see shame coming very close. And the part of it that you give attention to decides what happens to you. Is somebody following what I'm saying now? And so you study through the scripture, you notice that Mordecai came close to shame. How do I know that my Kairos time has come? It gets to a point we are certain things that I was comfortable with. I start getting irritated. I'm not saying that I'm picking on people. I'm talking about something that is happening inside of me. We never saw that Hannah was exchanging, uh, I mean, words with Benina, but we saw Hannah because you must face that shame with the right attitude. And so we saw how that Hannah's shame moved her to prayer. Hannah's shame moved her to vow. Are you with me right now? There are some people that when they get to that period of shame, if care is not taken, they start picking on people. They are angry with people. You can't be angry with people because it can't solve the problem. At that point, you are putting pressure on yourself because your time has come. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, you will not miss your season. Your friends no longer see you in that wedding because you have come to a point where you can't go for a wedding without an envelope. Why didn't you come? I, I will not, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm sorry I couldn't make it. But only you know that the normal you that used to go without envelope and without support can no longer go. You, it's not that you are ashamed of people. Shame is shaming you inside. Inside. 
inside and it is that type that inspires the best out of you somehow you start picking it i'm supposed to change this season when you get to that point that's the point that some of your friends will wonder we have not been seeing you we have not been seeing you the reason you are not even explaining to them that you are that why they have not been seeing you somehow what is happening in your life has driven you to a point where you need to make certain decisions in the name of jesus you will not miss your season Mordecai got to that point. Esther brought clothes to cover him. He said, take clothes. I don't need it. You are not giving people attitude. You are giving yourself attitude. Is somebody following what I'm saying? In the same office with everybody, but you are seeing father. In the same situation that normally you were comfortable with, you come to that. Listen, what I'm talking about here is not depression. What I'm talking about is when you start sensing within yourself, I am more than this. Has it ever happened to you? I mean, you start sensing. And you are not only sensing you are more than that. There are certain shame you are beginning to have within yourself, yet nobody knows. I smile, but inside, I just know I have to work out something. Is somebody following what I'm saying? I'm still looking normal, but inside I'm not normal. Has, have you ever been there before? Where you just know. I mean, that is what tells you. Listen, once you ever start feeling that way, you are close. Then, the next thing you have to do is to find out the attitude and the things you are supposed to do then to move to another level. Because some people, when they get to that point, instead of using it to their advantage, they now use it and they have inferiority complex. They are angry with everybody. They are depressed. But concerning Hannah, when her shame came, uh, the Bible says she used the right attitude. She went to the altar and prayed like never before. She went to Shiloh and refused to eat. Church, are with me right now. She went to Shiloh and refused to eat. She went to Shiloh and vowed a vow. And brothers and sisters, the Bible said it was there that she was praying that Eli met her and said, woman, you are drunk as usual. Ah, are you drunk by this time? Hannah turned to Eli and said, Sir, I am not drunk as I suppose. He get one shame will catch me. I just couldn't eat. I just have to deal with this issue of childbirth. And the Bible said, when Hannah spoke that way, Eli looked at her and said, Listen to me. By this time tomorrow, by this time next year, according to the time of life, you shall I'll embrace a son. So her time came. What if Hannah was not praying? Eli would not have met her. I declare in the name of Jesus, you will not miss your season. Yeah. When that shame comes, walk more. Did you hear what I said? Walk more. You get to that point, the same house you lived with comfortably, you are in the same house and you are uncomfortable. Don't pick on people. Place a demand on yourself. The reason why somebody came to that shame and the person committed suicide was because the person didn't hear a service like this. When you, came to, when you come to that shame, forget about what people are doing and face yourself. Thank God for what they have, but it's time to fix my life. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Yes. That was where Hannah came to. And the Bible says she prayed. There are some people when they come to that point, every time they are fighting with Belisha, you can't be fighting her because if you face it the wrong way, that season will come and pass. But Hannah did the right thing because every time you see shame coming, fame is close. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Every time you see shame coming, you are uncomfortable with that account balance. Then the real account balance is about coming. 
I'm telling you what I'm saying. It's from the scripture you can see it. It happened to Mordecai. It, had to, it happened to Mordecai. How do I know my Kairos time? I'm telling you. And once you get to that point, that's when you start discovering that you are moving from your waiting period to your manifestation on time. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare your season is here. Yeah. Come on, say my season is here. Yeah. Say it again. Say my season is here. Yeah. That's where Mordecai got to. Esther brought clothes. Mordecai said, I don't want clothes. What, do I, what are you looking for? I'm looking for my destiny. I have a vision. And if I get that vision fulfilled, Forget it. Did you notice that Joseph that has endured everything without complaining, immediately it was getting to two years to his Kairos time. He told the butler, he said, see to it that you make mention of me to Pharaoh. He said, please go and tell Pharaoh and bring me out of this dungeon. The guy never felt that way until two years to his Kairos time. I declare in the name of Jesus, you will not miss out on your season. And so when that time starts coming, so what you do instead of complaining is to work more. Pray more. We are a, we are a smile outside. But deal with the things inside. Is somebody following what I'm saying? At that point, the same spot you wear for 20 years and you didn't feel anyhow, you are at the same spot and you are feeling somehow. In what shame? It is needed in vision. Nobody is shaming you, you are the one. And you yourself, somehow, you are no longer comfortable because you just know that this is the time to cross that line. Is somebody following what I'm saying? When you get to that time, ha, ha, why have we not been seeing you? What is happening? Oh, you, you have not been calling as you should. I am using the time I used to call to walk. I am using the time I used to visitation. I'm using that time now to walk because something on the inside of me tells me I am more than this. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Yes. Mordecai got to that point. Hannah got to that point. And when you get to that point, don't feed the press. Walk. Tell your neighbor, walk. Uh, come on, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, walk. Tell your neighbor, pray when you get to that time. Tell them about give when you come to that time. Yes. That's the point Hannah got to. The problem was not Penina. No, sir. The Bible said she prayed. She vowed a vow. She prayed to a point that Eli said you must be drunk. Church, are you with me right now? Once you start sensing that that season is coming, one of the things that indicates it is that same thing you were comfortable with. You are in the same thing and you are somehow being ashamed. I, I'm feeling somehow that I hear this type of thing I, and I can't help. I'm feeling somehow that I had to do this and I couldn't do it. Now, you are not angry with everybody. At that point, you enter into yourself to bring out something in yourself. Let me tell you, this guy called prodigal in the Bible, when he went to meet his father was not when he started suffering. When you think more, you understand. The point he met his father was not the time. He was already suffering. But he got to a point of shame. Even if I was in my father's house as a servant, I would be better than this. He said, I will arise and go to my father. We didn't hear that he started calling everybody. He took the right action and the guy moved straight from shame to fame. It was the same guy that was begging just a few minutes ago that we heard the brother had a loud music that was playing in the background. 
same guy that was suffering a while ago, what happened? The guy converted shame to fame. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I prophesy over your life. This is your season for divine speed. Church, are you with me right now? Yeah. It gets to that point. At that point, you just start sensing it. In fact, when you start feeling somehow, take certain actions. Take certain actions. There is every likelihood that your season has come. Don't walk away. Because some people, when they get to that point, if care is not taken, they say, I'm disappointed. God, I've been waiting. This, that, that. You could do, and they walk away, not knowing how close they were to their season. If you were praying and you were tired to pray, that's the time to pray more. If you were giving and you are tired to give, that's the time to give more. Channel that shame to something resourceful because every time you see shame, fame is very close. Are you with me right now? Yes. See to it that you make mention of me to Pharaoh. How can Mordecai talk to Esther that way? You know, this is a queen. Even though you were the one that raised her, she's now a, a queen. You shouldn't talk to her anyhow. But Mordecai said, listen, if you keep quiet, help will rise for Israel from another place. Who knows whether God brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. When Esther heard it, Esther said, everybody should enter into prayer. See the right attitude. Some people, when they get to point they enter into bitterness my mates are married I'm not married no sir verse with yourself leave your mates because you need to understand that Cairo's time differs for different people is somebody following what I'm saying did you notice that Joseph that interpreted dream was still in prison and the person he interpreted his dream was out times nothing is wrong with you it's just that your time is yet to come is somebody following what I'm saying but the reason why I talk about divine speed is so that you understand that once it enters your time you are permitted to run if you are angry at slow movement in the day of divine speed you are in order the thing that happened is that seasons just changed. You have moved from the season of process to season of actualization. And I, the Lord your God, will hasten it in his time. So that's why at times it takes many years before the first one happens. Don't expect that it will take that, that number of years for the second one to happen. It took years before this happened. It's not going to take the same years for the second to happen. It needed to take those years for the first time to happen because you have entered the time for it to happen. The times it didn't happen, it was not yet time. And that's why it was taking the years. And you need to understand the difference between the two. Because if you don't understand the difference between the two, you will be stuck when the time for speed comes. One prayer I pray for you this morning. May God give you discernment. You didn't say a better amen. I declare may God give you discernment. May God give you discernment. Touch yourself. Say, my season has come. Say it again. Say, my season has come. Say, this is my own Kairos time. Yeah. That season of divine speed, it takes time before it happens. But once it starts happening, once it happened, it has gotten to the time when it should be happening. 
don't delay again. Should I say it again? I said at times, it takes time for it to happen. And it didn't happen at times, not because something is wrong with you, but because you were not the time, you were not in the time it should happen. But once it gets to the time where it should start happening, then that's the time. You must make up your mind that you see this period. Everything enters autopilot. Church, are you with me right now? Yes. The energy it takes to make one million is not the same energy it takes to make other millions. At times, it takes time until you enter your first million. And then once you enter that time, it's now time for the millionaire status. Church, are you with me right now? Yeah. But you must understand Cairo's time. And so Esther said, I shouldn't meet with the king. I shouldn't. However, even though I shouldn't, I want you guys to pray for me. If I perish, I perish. Meaning that Esther was close to shame. But it was time for her to fulfill her queenship. The reason she was made queen was for that reason. What God gives for a Christian is for eternal purpose. God does not give a Christian money for show off. He gives you money for kingdom's sake. My city through prosperity shall yet spread abroad. It's not for you to post and, and tell your friends, no sir, it is for the purpose of buying back the word. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare you will not miss your season. Come on, say my time has come. Say it again, say my time has come. And so, let me show you this. I don't know whether you have seen it in the Bible before. And so this Joseph that waited for 13 years, 13 years, he was calling himself a prime minister. Yet he moved from answering brother to slave. He was still calling himself a prime minister. He moved from that point to he became a servant. He was still a prime minister in his vision. Somebody say, yes, he's passing. Are you with me? And the guy moved before, you know, five years have passed. Ten years have passed. Some of his friends that were not confessing vision would have been doing better than him. Because if not for vision, they wouldn't have sold him. It was his dream that made them sell him. They said, let's sell him and see what will become of his dream. So they were obviously doing better than him. Right? What happened? He was passing through the process of vision. Yes, no certificate. He has moved from seven. Well, who will send a, a slave to school? From there to Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house to prison. Some of his friends would have graduated and posting on Facebook the next thing the Lord was doing in their lives. And the guy was in prison. Interpreting dreams yet broke. Church, are you with me right now? Until one day, somebody say one day. Come on, say, say one day. We have entered that one day in this ministry. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. May you enjoy divine speed. <laughs> one day, the Bible said. Pharaoh had a dream. And the Bible said when he came and shared the dream with them in Genesis 41, nobody had the interpretation. The guy that Joseph said, remember me, went there and forgot Joseph. Two years passed. The scripture said what? When Pharaoh had that dream, he said, I'm going to deal with everybody. Somebody must give me interpretation with the, of the dream. Somebody, I need interpretation. If, if I don't get it, you guys will lose your jobs. That's when one of them said, ah, there is this guy. 
called Joseph. I met him in prison. A Hebrew guy. He knows how to interpret dreams. I am sure that if you bring this guy here now and he, and he hears this dream, he will tell you the exact interpretation. In verse number 14 of, of look at verse number 14 of then Pharaoh said then Pharaoh sent and what? And called Joseph and they brought him you did not see that thing. Mm -mm, you didn't see it. Did you see it? Yeah, you did not see it. And they brought him. Eh? Eh? How did they bring him? It was not a time for slow movement again. The guy has entered his Kairos time. The king said, bring him in a haste. It was not dead. It was not Joseph that was in a haste. It was God that was in a haste. Because his time has come. When the time comes, I, the Lord your God, will hasten it. And that's why Pharaoh said, bring him hastily. Because once we enter this appointed time, the next thing that happens is not me being speedy. It's about my season. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. In a hurry, God is lifting somebody up. Shake your neighbor, turn about hastily. And look at your neighbor, turn about hastily. Give him that contract in a haste. Give him that promotion in a haste. Give him that appointment in a haste. His time has come. His time has come. What takes three months now happens in three minutes. Hastily. Ha, no, no, no statement in the Bible is made without reason. This guy that had waited for 13 years, when his day came, that's why when it is your waiting time, don't feel somehow. Because immediately it enters to your Kairos time, divine speed is allowed. You now achieve within a short time what they couldn't achieve in 20 years as politicians. At that time, they think you are a newcomer. They don't know that you have been in the school called process. Bring him hastily. And when they brought him, the Bible said, Joseph interpreted the dreams of the king. And the king said, what? What do we do? There is nobody as wise as this guy. The next thing we should have heard is let's do some background checks. No background check because his Kairos time has come. The king didn't say, I will get back to you. When he gets to divine speed, all I will get back to you start happening immediately. Yeah. The next thing we would have seen is that I'll get back. There and then, who does that kind of appointment? You will submit his name. And they will screen his name. And that's even when you find out that he's a prisoner. That's when you also find out that he's not an indigene. But divine speed was working. In a hurry. Somebody say in a hurry. Appoint him now, 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 now. And they appointed him. The king said remove his clothes. And they removed. He said, we are another robe. Designer shirt. Now, now, now. All of a sudden, the king said, uh, he said, listen, I put you in charge of everybody. It's only in the throne that I will be greater than you. And tomorrow, I am ready for your marriage. So what a man of vision did not get in 13 years. He got it in one day of appearing before Pharaoh because it was his Kairos time and his moment of divine speed. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Your season is here. 
Listen, I'm preaching to myself more because I'm aware that my season has come. I know for sure that there is a time for everything. There's a time to move slow and there's a time to move speedily. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Your season has come. One day that compensates 13 years. That's why when the agenda is waiting, wait with pride. When the agenda is speed, don't wonder explaining. There's no amount of explanation that you will give to people and they will realize that your time has come. A man moves from one million to billions. You don't know he has been walking. He has been walking. He has been behind the scene. He has been trying. A lot has happened. Many things happened to push him away. But he stayed back until the time. Should I show you about Mordecai? The same thing. Suffered so many things. Suffered so many things. Before his time came, he was looking stupid. Until when he was close to shame. I told you, how you know you are close to fame is that shame comes closer. Once you sense shame more, know that fame is close. Maintain a good attitude. Because what the devil wants you then is to switch and start behaving somehow. No, sir. Maintain, tell your neighbor, maintain a good attitude. Ah, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, maintain a good attitude. Ah, let me show you. See Mordecai, Esther 6. Before the, the news we heard a night before then was that they were about to kill Mordecai. That was the news we heard that they were about to kill Mordecai. Look at this. In Esther chapter 6, the Bible said the king could not sleep and he demanded for the book of records to be opened. In verse number 5, let, okay, let's start from verse number 4. Verse number 4. And the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman was coming to the outer court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hand Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. Look at this. And the king Sabbath said unto him, behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in. And the king said unto him, what shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, to whom would the king delight to do honor? What? More than to myself. Hannah, Haman said, it must be me the king wants to honor. <laughs> Not knowing that it was the turn of a man that has been waiting. We have waited. We have entered our Kairos time. And I prophesy divine speed. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> And Haman answered the king, for the man whom the king delighted to honor, let me think. Let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear. And the horse that the king rided upon. And the crown royal which is set upon his head. Uh, look at this. And let his apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes. That they may array the man without whom the king what? The lies to honor, wear him designer clothes and bring him on horseback, get him a car, the king, the one the king has not used before, through the street of the city and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Look at this. Then the king said to Haman, You did not see it. He said, Make haste. Why did they use that word? Once you enter your Kairos time, it's a make his period. See, there is our make his period. Am I talking to somebody here? The king said, make haste. Why did he say hurry? Because the guy's Kairos time has come. I, the Lord your God, God will hasten it. It was not Mordecai making haste. It was God making haste on his behalf. I prophesy to somebody, God is making haste on your behalf. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor in a hurry. 
shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor in a hurry from 1,000 people to 5,000 in a hurry somebody shall make haste make haste, tell your neighbor make haste look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor your time has come, make haste submit that application make haste, submit that proposal, make haste go for that defense, am I talking to somebody here, we have entered appointed time, shake your neighbor tell your neighbor, make haste make haste Make haste. Make haste. After many years of suffering, one day he wore designer clothes to wear it forever. Not to borrow it, to wear it forever. One day he rode on a horse the king had not used to ride it forever. Not only that, the Bible said his family became task free. I like to get to that point where my blessing overflows to my family, where it overflows to everybody that is connected to me. The king said, Make haste. He did not, the king would have said, Go and do it to Mordecai. But once he gets to Cairo's time, the language is make haste. I prophesy to everybody owing you, let them make haste and pay you. Everybody promising you appointment, let them make haste and appoint you. Everybody promising you contract, let them make haste and give it to you. Am I talking to somebody here? Everything that is hanging, I declare, let him make haste and release it to you. Shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor in a hurry. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor in a hurry. That money is coming in a hurry. That contract is coming in a hurry. That new level is coming in a hurry. You are about to be announced in a hurry. Touch yourself. Say, my time has come. Say, my season is here. Prophesy to yourself. Say, my time has come. Say, it's my season of divine speed. Everything sharp, sharp. Sharp do bless. Sharp estate. Sharp contract. Sharp deal. Am I talking to somebody? Sharp to make haste shall make haste in a hurry in a hurry see there I shout in a hurry say in a hurry the reason why you shouldn't allow anybody put you on pressure when your time has not come is because when your time comes you can achieve in one month what it took them 30 years to do If there is no compensation in God, then our waiting is for nonsense. There is a package in God called compensation where your waiting is rewarded. The fact that you got the offer and you refused and they thought you have failed. I refused and they are already gone ahead of me, but I refused. I refused because I fear God. It looks like they have gone ahead of me. But there is a package in God called make haste. We are an Ahab that took up before Elijah. We see Elijah wave him and say, be coming. Is it not surprising that some people will walk into some office very soon? And they will be surprised. The man they will meet there. They are surprised. How are you here? Because the pace you were going, you were not supposed to be there. They didn't know that that pace you were going was because it was your pre kairos. And at that time, the, the pace can be slow. But once it gets to Cairo, speed jets. There are jets, there are speed jets. Speed jets. You move faster. The king said, to, he, if the king said, go and do it for him, he would have been right. He said, do it in a hurry. Why did he say, do it in a hurry? It is the time for his compensation for all he has gone through. I prophesy over your life. Your time of compensation is here. Shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor, make haste, make haste. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, make haste. I shall make haste. That husband fast, that wife fast, that relationship fast. Say it's my time. Say it's my season. 
that contract fast that level fast that new thing fast say this is my season of speedy accomplishments and I the Lord your God will hasten it in his time and so one morning while they were expecting to see Mordecai at the gate remember his fame came close to his shame because fame and shame they are competing when the time of your fame comes shame comes closer it is up to you to know the right thing to do that's the time to do church more to avoid depression and backsliding that's the time to do God more to avoid running back is somebody following what I'm saying because somebody that is destined for fame can have shame I'm telling you, when it gets to that time, do God more. That was time Mordecai fasted more. Remember, the gallows they will hang him has been prepared. And people were expecting to hear that Mordecai was already hung. Remember, they were not in the palace to know what happened. And then all of a sudden, they saw a man on a horse that the king has not rode. And they thought it was the king. And they saw Haman, the most trusted and reputable person in the kingdom, shouting this is the man whom the king delights to honor. And they looked at the horse and the person they saw was Mordecai. Somebody would have said, let me see very well whether it was Mordecai. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like they that dreamed. And all of a sudden, our mouths we are filled with laughter. I mean when your landlord comes to your estate and say are you sure it's my tenant am i talking to somebody here i'm talking about a season in your life when the guy that said let's go to a native doctor comes to you and say take me to your god am i talking to somebody shout is my season look at your neighbor shall make it And then, that is the time that they will abbreviate Mordecai's name. When you make it, they abbreviate your name. It's no longer Mordecai, it's Mordecai. Mordecai. Anthony and Tony is not the same. Anthony is Tony that is trying. Tony is Anthony that has made it. Obina and Obi is not the same thing. Obina is Obi that is trying. Obi is Obina that has made it. Am I talking to somebody here? Abbreviate your name, church, because your season is here. Am I talking to somebody here? Your season is here, church. I tell you, I say your season is here. I say your season is here. In a haste, in a haste, in a haste. Everything is changing. In a haste. Lift your hands everywhere you are. Be on your feet and thank him. Appreciate him. Makora sata. Leba basata. Randa bokoshia. Leba babasata. Thank him for the times you have to wait. If you are still in waiting time. I already told you what will happen after you are waiting. Still thank him if you are waiting. Randa bokoshata. Our seasons are different. Randa bokoshata. Yanamanga rose. Kala brande la kai, zale grando la ha, jaga brato la haya, azeke bregotoa, rababasha, yenorokosa, brega dala bakasa, randa bakoshata, le bregetosata, is a time of speed for some people, rande la kasa, janana na, rababageso, rabayanda gasa, eh shaga, bregotolasa, ramanagasa, egara da. Rabba Baba Kosa, La Baranda Casata, Yeso, Magabre Godoska, Rabba Baba Yasa, La Cabra Gadoska, Rabba Baba Sha, Rabba Baba Sata, La Cabaranda Sata. Imam Chuku on a boge coya, Ihonanya. Kariria na hota, 
Uto konye rai O wapu kinye ya O kwe siro tuto Hallelujah Ema machuku Ona boge koya Eho nanyaya O karere ai Na wata Uto konye rai O wapu kinye ya O kwe siro tuto Hallelujah Lift your hands, sing God. Na pota wo na la pete. Ome waka kuzo ne lo ke kume. Oti ya wo na pota na na ta na pu o tuto alelu. Lift your hands everywhere you are saying, Oh, na pota, oh, na la pete. Oh, me woka muzo, me loke kume. Oh, tinye wo, a pota, no non ta, a pu o tuto. One more time, lift your hands everywhere you are. On a puta, on a la piti. On a waka, kuzo ne loke kume. Oti e wa, a puto, no non ta. Lift your two hands, close your eyes. I'd like you to have faith in your heart. I'm not speaking my idea. I'm speaking exactly what God asked me to tell you. In the name of Jesus, your time of divine speed is here. The king said, make haste. And today I decree as a priest to everything that belongs to you that is hanging and delaying in the name of Jesus I have audacity to declare make haste and come to you let a new level make haste and come to you let a new experience make haste and come to you in the name of Jesus Christ I'm speaking to everybody that is seeing shame closely and then not knowing that there is fame. I stand as a prophet to declare the proper one for you. In the name of Jesus, let it be fame for you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It was that point that Hannah found herself and Eli played his priestly duty. Lift your hand with faith in your heart. I stand as a priest of God. This morning, I declare in the name of Jesus, concerning your business, your career, your life, in the name of Jesus, speedy accomplishments. I say speedy accomplishments. I say speedy accomplishments. 13 years has passed. 15 years for some persons. 17 for some persons. And it is Cairo's time. Lift your right hand. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Experience be the accomplishment. Experience be the accomplishment. Let the Lord hasten it. Because your time has come. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Take a seat and lay it on the altar. So into this very divine speed. Something has happened already. If you make a transfer, make sure you touch the altar. Oh, 
Please come forward with your tithe. Every time the Lord blesses you, 10% of what he gives to you belongs to him. It is called tithe. And the Bible said when you pay your tithes, virus before your six, the windows of heavens are open and a blessing is poured to you. And Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for these ones who are out to pay their tithes. In the name that is above every other name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, I declare as they pay their tithes, the virus before their six, the windows of heavens are open and a blessing is poured to them. And everybody under the sound of my voice, practicing the same Lord of tithes, I declare the same blessing. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Drop your tithe if you transfer, touch the altar and go back to your seat. Please stand up with your offering everywhere you are. Be on your feet with your offering. Lift your offering towards heaven. Father, we thank you. We honor you. Be on your feet with your offering, church. We honor you. We thank you. We then come before you empty-handed as we give good measures, press down, shaking together, and running over. Shall men give to our bosom. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be on your feet. Let's celebrate Jesus, church. Grace and mercy, aha, who's given us the son Emmanuel, aha, a torment for us, our sins, a gift to set us all free, say, oh, let God be. Sabuyane, Mimma, 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 Sabu
Once we come to the first Sunday of the month, we appreciate God with thanksgiving, with, our, with offering in our hands to thank him for bringing us to a new month. Stand up with your offering. If you also make a transfer, make sure you touch the altar. They will pass the this thing across to you. Father, we thank you. Lift it towards heaven. We honor you. Be glorified. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here on your feet, let's celebrate Jesus. Shout a praise. Are you ready for another shift? Hey. Your heads, put your heads together. When upon that pillows you are tempest tossed. When you are discouraged thinking. Here on your feet, let's celebrate Jesus. Stop. 
just shake your body, shake your body, shake your body, shake your body, shake your body. He's worthy of our praise. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. We worship you, Jesus. Hey, when upon like pillows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Hey, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord.
hands everywhere you are in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because Thanksgiving is the seed for more in July you will still be present God I help you in May will help you in June I declare in the name of Jesus what is yet to be perfected will be perfected in the name of Jesus church say a better amen. amen please what's the name of the child rain in the BC and you promise to bring her up in the fear of God and to give her quality education church stretch with your hands and begin to bless rain in the BC declare God's blessing upon her may she grow in love and understanding in grace no evil shall befall her among her may she will stand out the blessing of the Lord rest upon her. Yes, she's a blessing to her parents, a blessing to Africa, a blessing to the CDI church. Open your mouth and pray. Yes, every child is born an answer to a problem. She will fulfill her reason for coming. Her purpose for being born shall be fulfilled. And Father, we thank you. We give you praise for the life of rain in Dubisi. We declare your blessing upon her. She grows from grace to grace, from strength to strength. No evil shall befall her. The best in her is coming out. In the name of Jesus. You that started the good work in her will complete it. She's an answer to the problem of many. She will fulfill her destiny. In the name of Jesus. Among her maids she will stand out. Everything needed for her upbringing is provided. Thank you Father. In Jesus name. Let the whole church say a better amen. amen. You've done so much for me. I cannot do it confession for the week. Lift your sacrifice for the week to us and say, Father, with this sacrifice in my hands, I count every other sacrifices that may be made on another altar against me, against my family members. With this sacrifice, I back up my confession. Declare it is my season. Say I manifest. I'm highly sensitive to spiritual things. Declare I receive divine speed for vision fulfillment. I will not miss my Kairos time. There are no limitations for me. It's an upward and forward movement for me. Declare my health cannot fail me. I'm protected and preserved. Enchantment does not work against me. Declare I live. I can't die. Can I say a big amen? amen. Drop your sacrifice. You've done so much for me, I cannot tell it all.
celebrate Jesus. Did you receive something from the Lord today? Amen. Say, my season has come. Say, this is my Kairos time. And everything will be happening speedily. Celebrate Jesus everywhere you are. Next week, Sunday, is Friendship Stroke Old School Service. Give the Lord a big hand for that. That service on Sunday will be something else. A trial will convince you. You won't try. <laughs> it's friendship stroke, old school service. And so you dress in the old school fashion and we'll have an old school form of church. It's going to be powerful. Amen. So prepare yourself for that service. The time is eight o'clock. Invite your friends. It's a friendship service. So our target is that while you're coming to that service, you're coming with your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors, and your relations. Don't come alone. Please come with your friends. Come with your neighbors. It's going to be a very powerful service on Sunday and the time is 8 o'clock. The hand bills you have is for you to use it and invite somebody. He that winner's soul is wise. Make a list of some of your friends. You would want them to attend the service and start putting a call across to them to join you for that service on Sunday. I hope this announcement is taken. Yeah, so please note that. Tomorrow, 4 p.m., we're having prayer quick. Give the Lord a begin for that. Please make sure you make yourself available. Let us pray. And then by 5 p.m., citizenship class starts immediately. If you are not yet uh, going through citizenship class, I encourage you to please start immediately. There are some laws. There are some rules. There are some things we are going to read out to you very soon. Make sure that you start your citizenship class immediately. I'd like you to note that. Please do that. Then on Wednesday, 5 p.m., please make sure you are around for miracle service and reach out to people and ask them to join you. And then find a way to share your testimonies to us, the things that God is doing around you find a way to do that. I have a little form here I'd like you to help us fill. And this form is for people you have invited to church. They've been coming. Maybe some of them have left town. But you feel they should still be in touch with what we are doing in the CDI church. We have a platform for them called Pastor Casey Diaspora. So the form that you are getting is for you to write the name of such persons, their phone numbers, their WhatsApp number really, and then their location. Did you get what I said? Just write their name for us. I think what is here is almost for one name, but it can be more. You can write more at the back. This is, you can have up to three persons. Write their phone numbers and their location. Give them to us. We want to be keeping in touch with them and making sure that they are still receiving the messages of this great ministry where they are. So if you have such a person, you raise your hand, the ushers will give you this form. You fill it and then submit it back to us. And then we also want to have your own name and your phone number that have such a person. Maybe you have invited somebody to church and the person is out of town. We still want to be keeping touch keeping in touch with the person when the person is not here. Please, I encourage you to please make sure that you fill these forms for us so that we can also keep in touch with the person wherever they are at the moment. I hope this announcement is taken. Yeah, so please note that. I want to thank all our partners. Please celebrate all our partners. God bless you real good, real good. We do not take your partnership for granted. I keep talking to God concerning you, and I believe we are just that, and God is taking us somewhere powerful. If you are not yet a partner, I encourage you to join and become a partner. Partnership is a monthly financial commitment. Monthly, what you commit to give to God on a monthly basis towards the visions and the goals of this ministry. 
We are currently building a free school in Albany. And that is happening because people are committed to partnership. And so I encourage you to keep on partnering. Keep on partnering with the CDI Church and encourage other people too to partner with us. In the month of June, I heard there's going to be prize for first 50 partners that will redeem between now and 18th of June. Give the Lord a big hand for that. Yeah, between now and 18th of June, there's going to be a prize, a raffle draw for a prize for people that will redeem their partnership between now and 18th of June. So I encourage you, please keep partnering. If you are not yet a partner, I encourage you to start. If you're a partner, you have not been paying your partnership, please, I encourage you to make sure that you match the words that you have given with actions. I'd like all our partners to stand up today. Let me put the blessing of God upon you. God did not plan for you to dash him money. God wants to give you value in return. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare that God bless the works of your hands. From where it is coming, let God replenish. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you bask on every side. I ask that God will cause men and women to partner with your vision. You will never be stranded. Hear me, I said you will never be stranded. Let me say it again, you will never be stranded. As a ministry, we don't suffer frustration. You will never be frustrated. In this season of divine speed, I declare upon your career, upon your vision, experience divine speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a big, big, big hand. Please, if you have not paid your partnership for me, I encourage you to pay your partnership. So many things we do in this church, so many things that you'll be wondering, where is the money coming from? I encourage you to please do the bit that you have to do and make sure that you are committed to what God is doing in the CDI church. Partnership for the month of June is already running. Make sure you pay your partnership. If you're owing us, please make sure you, owe, you make sure you pay us. And then also help us sponsor free copies of our daily devotion. How many of us have been getting blessed with our daily devotional? Believe me, we've been receiving testimonies upon testimonies of the impact of this devotional. And then, believe me, what is ahead is bigger than what has gone ahead. Are you with me right now? It's going to be powerful. And so I encourage you, keep encouraging people to uh, sponsor devotional. And then when you sponsor copies, we already have sponsored copies. You can indicate and we can give you. So you can give to that friend that you feel should be reading uh, devotional. Did you get what I said now? Yeah, service on Sunday is friendship service. You are not permitted to come without your friends. And it's also an old school service. So note that the time is 8 a.m. on Sunday. I hope this announcement is taken. Let's welcome our first time as